Alright guys, I'm here with my review of WWE's Monday Night Raw for October 15th, 2012. Um, sorry this video is up a little bit late. I was only able to watch half the show last night and then I finished the other half this morning. And I have to say that splitting the show up makes it a lot easier to get through these three hour shows. Um, which also probably allowed me to enjoy the show a lot more than I normally would just watching it in one sitting. But this was an alright show, I guess. Uh, it took place in Nashville with Jim Ross and Michael Cole on commentary. They probably wanted Lawler for the show, but I'm glad they didn't try to like rush him to come back or anything like that. But Big Show comes out, and he says the debate was just to make him look like a fool. He talks about the Bro Kick WMD Challenge. He says a hell in a cell. He won't be punching a machine. And he's talking about how the fans are sending him tweets, calling him fella. And he says, none of you are Irish. So that was pretty good. And he says he wants to face Daniel Bryan to make up for his short title reign that everybody keeps bringing up. And we see some wrestlers backstage watching. And Daniel Bryan says he won't go out there. Of course, AJ makes him go. And he looks at Kane and says, you have my back, right? And Kane just laughs at him. So we get Big Show versus Daniel Bryan. And Jim Ross actually says on commentary that Big Show was taller than his kindergarten teacher. I find that hard to believe. I know Big Show was a big kid, but taller than his kindergarten teacher. I mean, you go to in the kindergarten at like five, and unless his teacher was a little person, I think that's kind of a stretch. So I don't know if I buy that one, Jr. But we get the match, and Daniel Bryan goes up top, gets hit with the choke slam, giving Big Show the win. Uh, Kane comes out, laughs at Daniel Bryan, and then once he sees Big Show signaling for the WMD, he gets in the ring and protects Daniel Bryan. It was kind of weird. So Paul Heyman's in the ring. He introduces Punk. Punk comes out, says he was disrespected last week, and he will prove them all wrong. He talks about slapping Vince. Says Vince will never compete in the ring again, which I thought was kind of a weird thing to say since last week on Raw, Vince was the one actually standing tall. Um, I know Punk's trying to say he gave him such a bad beating, but Vince was actually pretty dominant in that match, so I don't know. And there's also a sign in the crowd that says, Jerry Jarrett is my hero, which I thought was kind of strange. I mean, it is Nashville, though. So... Punk is going to unveil this picture of who he's going to face at Hell in a Cell. And he refuses because the fans won't be quiet. So Vince McMahon comes out and he says that he told Punk if he couldn't make a decision that he would make it for him. And Punk blew it. So later tonight there's going to be a contract signing and Vince will announce who Punk's going to face at Hell in a Cell. They announced Del Rio versus Orton at Hell in a Cell. And then we get Del Rio versus Brodus Clay. Um, short match here. Del Rio gets Brodus in the armbar, and he taps immediately. Then we see Punk backstage. He's pissed off about Vince's decision. Heyman says, this is exactly what I warned you about. And Punk tells Heyman to go see Vince and tell him he wants to face him again tonight. But then we get Santino and Zack Ryder versus the primetime players. Darren hits the gut buster on Santino. Zack hits a rough rider on Darren, and then Titus hits a spine buster on Ryder for the win. Afterwards, the band comes out. They throw Santino over the ropes, they put the boots to Ryder, and now they're the 3MB, three-man band, I guess. Uh, they do their air guitar thing. I'm just wondering what JR is thinking about all this on commentary, just sitting there watching this. <laughs> like these three guys. So Dolph and Vicky come out, and Dolph's pissed that Ryback is going to be in the main event, or at least considered to be in the main event, when he says he's been busting his ass. Otunga comes out and says, Ryback doesn't deserve a title shot, but Dolph doesn't either. So AJ puts Dolph and Otunga against Ryback. Ryback clotheslines Dolph. He actually lets Dolph tag in Otunga. And once he tags in Otunga, Dolph and Vicky just leave. Ryback hits shell-shocked on Otunga for the win, and that was it. I guess they're trying to build him up, having Ryback squash bigger-name guys. Uh, so, I mean, they have to do that now. He's going to be in the main event at Hell in a Cell, so. 
Heyman goes to see Vince to propose the challenge. He says his efforts last week were Herculean. And Vince agrees to the match, but says it will be against Heyman. This doesn't happen. Matt Stryker is complaining to AJ about getting put in the no lock and choke slammed. Says he wants an apology, so she puts him in a match against Kane for some reason. I don't know how this is going to help ratings or anything. <laughs> Uh, then we get Antonio Cesaro versus Justin Gabriel. And Gabriel hits the 450, but Cesaro gets a foot on the ropes. Gabriel goes for a springboard. Cesaro hits the very European uppercut and hits the neutralizer for the win. Um, they're just continuing to build up Cesaro. I think it's great. They're doing a good job with this. He hasn't done anything as impressive as when he hit the neutralizer on Brodus. Um, but it's still great that they're using him every week, at least on Raw. So, Kane versus Matt Stryker. Stryker tries to talk his way out of it. Says he just wants an apology. Kane hugs him, puts him in a bear hug, a really awkward bear hug, and then choke slams him for the win. He tries to interview him after, and then he starts screaming, I'm the tag team champions. I don't know. I don't know why they did this segment at all. I guess they wanted to reward Matt Stryker for something. I don't know. Another Miz TV, this time with Kofi Kingston. Miz puts down Kofi, says he will, or says Kofi hasn't done anything in years. He's a B player, always will be. Kofi says he will take the title from Miz on Wednesday, and he wants to face him tonight. Miz accepts. Kofi attacks him. Miz leaves. That was it, really. Then we get Sheamus versus Wade Barrett again. Big Show comes out to watch at the top of the ramp. This was a pretty good match here. Sheamus actually throws Wade Barrett into the ring steps, but he jumps over the steps and then just mule kicks the steps <laughs> for no reason. I thought that was pretty funny. But this was a good match. Sheamus gets Barrett in the cloverleaf, but Big Show starts to come down to the ring, so Sheamus lets him go. He's trying to challenge Big Show, and then Barrett pushes Sheamus to the ropes. Big Show pulls them down. So Sheamus falls out of the ring. The referee rings the bell, and Big Show says, He fell over. He's clumsy. <laughs> Big Show was pretty good here tonight, I have to say. And he throws Sheamus back in. Sheamus gets up immediately. Bro kicks Barrett. Clotheslines Big Show out of the ring. And that was it for this segment. Just trying to make Sheamus look stronger here. I expect Big Show to get revenge either on SmackDown or next week on Raw before Hell in a Cell to kind of build him up too. I guess he did win that whole punch the machine challenge. Cena tells Vince backstage that he belongs in Hell in a Cell and Vince says he'll take it under consideration. Then we get E versus Layla for the Divas title. And I think they actually got a This Is Awesome chant for this match. Uh, this was decent, but the finish was really weird. Layla goes to the second rope, and Eve kicks her off. But the way it was, it just wasn't smooth. None of this was smooth. So Layla's on the second rope, and Eve is standing next to her, and Layla looks like she's going to jump onto an invisible person because Eve is over here. So she's acting like she's going to jump on no one, and Eve just kicks her, she falls, she pins her, and somehow Layla gets a foot on the rope. She kind of has to move her body over. It, the whole thing, just the finish was really bad. So she gets a foot on the rope, but the ref doesn't see it, and then Eve kicks it off. Um, they're just trying to build this up. I don't know if they're going to potentially have Layla snap, maybe turn heel or something, but I don't know. So Kane asks Daniel Bryan if he saw what he did to Matt Stryker, and... Daniel Bryan says no. <laughs> uh, he says that if Kane thinks what Big Show did to him was so funny, then he should face Big Show next week. Ryback tells Vince to feed him punk. And I was expecting Vince to do his trademark gulp thing. But he doesn't. And really it was just Vince putting over Ryback here. They're still not letting him talk for obvious reasons. and um, Fans still seem to be behind him. We get Rhodes Scholars versus Primo and Epico. The tag team tournament finals were supposed to be tonight, but it's going to be next week because Rey Mysterio has the flu, apparently. Uh, Sandow hits the neckbreaker on Epico for the win. This was all right. 
Then, for some reason, we see the three-man band, 3MB, and they go to a honky-tonk bar and get on stage, and then they get kicked out. <laughs> I have to say, I was surprised they did more with these guys. I mean, they had two segments on Raw this week. And Michael Cole actually says, what did we just witness? <laughs> but it was entertaining. Kofi versus Miz. This was another alright match. Kofi wins after kicking Miz directly into his face. Oh man, this was brutal. I was watching this and I was like, holy crap. And I feel bad for Miz, but it was kind of funny. And they replayed it a bunch of times. And they're checking on him. And he's actually bleeding from this kick. But damn, he kicked him right in the face. Oh, I know that hurt. So Kofi wins the match here. Then we get the contract signing. Vince comes out. We have CM Punk, Ryback, and Cena in the ring. JR says, Heyman feels like a boil on the buttocks of life at times. <laughs> and Punk tells Vince, he obviously knocked a few screw looses. Oh, boy. Sometimes I feel bad for CM Punk because he really does. He is a good talker, but he does have these blooper moments. And it's just something you notice. Like, with Cena, he can go out there and cut a promo and talk and everything. He doesn't really make a lot of mistakes. But CM Punk does kind of flub his words a few times here and there. I'm still a fan, though, and I do like his promos. But every once in a while, he'll just say something goofy. And when he said, I knocked a few screw looses, I was just, oh, man, that's got to suck. Because he was the first one to talk. He's supposed to be cutting this big heel promo. Cena's out there. Ryback's not going to say shit. Ryback just stood there the whole time, but the boss is right there, and you just say something goofy like that in front of Cena and Vince. It's got to be embarrassing. Heyman, too. He's another great talker who doesn't mess up his words. But um, anyways, Cena says Ryback just wants to kick someone's ass, and Punk needs his ass kicked, so I guess Cena's endorsing Ryback. And Cena starts a Feed Me More chant. Ryback signs the contract. Punk gets in his face, he slams Punk's head on the table, and then he hits shell-shocked on Punk. And that was how the show ended. Um, this, whole tr this whole thing with Ryback versus Punk, I'm kind of surprised they did this, because I really thought that... I would say that they could still add Cena to this match, but because of the way things went tonight, I really don't think they will. I think they're really just going to build Ryback versus Punk. Well, they can't really build it. It's happening in like a week or two weeks. But I thought that if they put Cena in this for a triple threat match, they could get the draw from Cena because whether we like him or we don't, he is a draw. And he makes matches feel more important because that's what the company's been built around is John Cena. And I just don't see this pay-per-view doing as many buys without him on the show. So maybe they'll add him somehow. He'll be, uh, he'll be out there or something in some capacity, I'm sure. But as far as the match, I thought if they did a triple threat, then they could spend a lot of time having Ryback face Punk. And that way, Cena, because he's not 100%, could still be in the match and protected. He wouldn't have to do a lot of moves or anything. Because it would be Ryback versus Punk, mostly. But they would still get the draw from Cena being involved. So I really don't know why they didn't just do that. But I'm fine with Ryback versus Punk. It should be interesting. This might be a spoiler. Uh, apparently, because I know a lot of people are wondering, well, how the hell are they going to do this finish? Um with Punk because it's kind of too soon for Ryback to win the title, but if he loses, he also loses his streak. So how can they do this? Well, on the house shows, apparently Punk has been facing Ryback and beating him by hitting a low blow and disqualification. So technically Ryback wins the match and Punk keeps the belt. But since it's a Hell in a Cell match, I'm not really sure, but I do expect some type of you know shenanigans to go on so that uh, that way Punk can keep the title and Ryback can keep the streak. Um, so I'm sure they're trying to think of some plan now because I, they probably had Cena in mind all this time and now that it's Ryback they're just kind of thinking, okay, what the hell are we going to do now? So, um, But anyway, that was this week's Raw. I thought it was a decent show this week. Nothing really special. It was kind of average, but 
Um, I did enjoy some of this, and I think a lot of that was because I didn't watch the full three hours in one sitting. But anyways, I hope you guys liked this video. Leave your thoughts on this week's show in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Bye.